Thanks for stopping by my poster today. Hi, I'm Kelly. Uh, so the project I'm going to walk you through is based on the idea of training deep learning models to learn the binding patterns of a transcription factor in one species and then predict the binding sites of that same TF in another species. You can imagine a lot of motivations for wanting to do this. For example, that we could impute TF binding data in many cell types in species where it might be too difficult or too costly to perform the ChIP-seq experiments directly. We could also use these models as an oracle to better understand how gene regulation has evolved differently in different related species. And because of how highly conserved the regulatory programs and sequence affinities of many TFs are across mammals, this is something that should be feasible. To start off, we needed to know how well deep learning models designed to predict TF binding from sequence perform across species. So we set up the following experiment. We binned the human and mouse genomes into 500 base pair bins and labeled each bin according to whether or not a ChIP-seq peak fell within it. Then for a given TF, we trained one model to predict binding from mouse liver ChIP-seq data and one model to predict binding from human liver ChIP-seq data. Finally, we asked how well these models performed both within and across species. What we saw was that for each of the TFs surveyed, there was a noticeable gap in performance between the within species and the cross species models, shown between the blue and the orange lines on the left and between the colors of box plots on the right. This was particularly true. This gap was particularly large on the test data sets from the human genome. To investigate the source of this cross species gap, we looked for sites in the human genome that were differentially predicted between mouse and human models basically asking the question, which sites in the human genome did only the mouse model mispredict? We found that while there are differentially predicted bound sites, the unbound sites showed more evidence of differential prediction across all TFs that would contribute to this cross-species gap. In particular, there was a large subset of unbound sites from the human genome mispredicted only by the mouse model, shown here in the bottom right corner of each of these plots. What was most interesting was that for all four of our TFs, the majority of those unbound sites in that corner, mispredicted only by the mouse model, overlapped with an ALU element. ALUs are the most common repeat element in the human genome, but because they're primate specific, the mouse model never saw them during training. Thus, it makes sense that we're seeing these mispredictions. To look deeper into why ALU elements in particular are mispredicted, we interpreted our models, scoring individual bases and example sequences based on how important each base is to the model's prediction. Comparing these important scores across models, we saw that although the models seem to generally agree on the motif representation for each TF, shown best by the plots on the left, they do pick up on very different sequence features within false positive ALUs, shown here on the right. This, along with an analysis showing how heterogeneous the enrichment is across ALU subfamilies within our interesting false positives, suggests that highly specific sequence features are what's driving the differential ALU prediction between mouse and human models. Next, we investigated a potential solution to this problem called domain adaptation, where we consider the mouse and human genomes different domains that need to be aligned within our model's learned sequence feature embedding space in order for models to transfer well across species. Specifically, we adopted a gradient reversal layer strategy that uses a modified architecture and training scheme. The goal is to discourage the model from learning any species-specific specific sequence features while it is learning TF binding patterns during training. Notably, this strategy does not require the binding labels of the test species during training, so this is a form of unsupervised domain adaptation. We retrained our mouse model using this strategy and saw that across all TFs surveyed, the domain adaptive mouse models no longer systematically mispredict unbound ALUs the way the original mouse models did. Notice the bottom right corners of these plots are relatively empty compared to before. We also see that this improvement is reflected in the increased performance of models for three out of our four TFs, according to the AUPRC. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to reach out with any questions, and also feel free to check out our preprint on BioArchive, which is linked at the top of this poster.